the talk earlier this evening of the need for more financial regulation will only serve to remind people that banking can easily go wrong, bluntly because there's little trust in the industry, something that can be easy to exploit. So imagine a system of transacting money that was actually fraud-proof. It exists. It's called blockchain. And it's the model on which Bitcoin, the virtual currency, is built. Is this the stuff of revolution? David Grossman takes a look. Think of writing, think of printing, think of the telegraph or wireless. Or, in many of our lifetimes, think of the internet and smartphones. Technologies that have changed everything. So radical that before they hit, they're almost impossible to imagine. And yet, a few years after, it's life without them that defies imagination. So what next? Well, there are plenty of very rich individuals and corporations betting big that the next game-changing technology is called blockchain. We see the power of what this blockchain can become. Venture capitalists see this. But even more exciting is the disruptive minds of entrepreneurs are seeing the power of this. And they're building new businesses in new paradigms that are going to change the shape and the face of all industries. At the forefront of this race to exploit blockchain are the financial institutions. From the bank's perspective, one of the reasons they got in trouble is because they didn't trust each other. Blockchain, at its, at its heart, is a system that allows people that don't trust each other to trust each other. That's very, very useful for a banking system that, let's face it, got into trouble because it did not trust each other. OK, so enough with the drum roll. What exactly is blockchain? Well, it comes from the shady, anarchic world of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a self-regulating digital currency. It doesn't need a central bank in charge. How? Well, it uses a blockchain. This is an immutable ledger of who owns what. Every time Bitcoins are transferred, another block of data is added to the chain. Like the DNA in every cell, a complete copy of the blockchain is held by the entire network of users. Therefore, if you tried to cheat the currency, trying to spend what you haven't got, well, everyone else would know. But this same technology, many believe, could be used to track anything of value. The technology enables the transfer of those currencies that have been created, Bitcoin being one of hundreds, if not thousands, of currencies that exist today. But it's also the ability to transfer value in ways that we haven't seen before, that extend well beyond financial services. It can go into, for example, a retailer that wants to be able to verify that their goods that they are marketing as organic in their grocery store the blockchain allows the ability to track the actual creation of those goods and through the supply chain verify that they actually are organic so that then where they are then marketing them to their end customers they're confident that it actually is organic that's just one simple use case and there are thousands of other potential uses from pharmaceuticals to luxury prestige goods like watches and handbags the music and film industries are excited that blockchain could be the technological answer to piracy. And the insurance industry thinks it might help tackle fraud. I mean, ultimately, the diamond comes out of the ground, it becomes certified and known as a... For Leanne Kemp, blockchain means diamonds. A diamond blockchain, she says, could record each gem's unique combination of attributes, giving it a sort of DNA. She's had investment from Barclays to develop her ideas. It gives us a global ledger. It gives us actually global transparency over the supply chain and the chain of custody of the diamond. Where did the diamond come from? Was it a blood diamond? What's the provenance? What mine did it come out of? At the moment we have a number of regulated authorities that sit in between systems and consensus opinion that actually have provided some great processes like the Kimberley process to ensure that blood diamonds do not run themselves into the retail space. But now, for the very first time, we have a global ledger it's permanent and immutable, so therefore I can't change the record. So there, from a perspective of trust, we know that those records are indeed correct. Blockchain actually holds out the prospect of smart contracts. That is, contracts that police and enforce themselves. For example, suppose a car makes a journey. A road use payment could automatically be triggered. No need for a big central database. No need for enforcement authorities. However, not everyone is convinced. Blockchain as a technology is not necessarily tried and tested. We're still very much in the sort of 
experimental phases and as far as we know it is actually a very expensive technology to, to use because it involves lots of different banks or institutions or so-called nodes using the same ledger on all their systems. That is much more expensive than say using one master ledger against everybody else. So that's the primary issue. The secondary issue is whether or not it actually works. And that's what all this money and research is trying to find out. Because if it works, blockchain holds out the prospect of fraud-proof, cheaper transactions, liberating businesses and markets to develop in ways we can't yet imagine. Let's see, David Grossman. Well, that's almost.